Hey, good morning and welcome to Daily Devos. Today we are in Acts chapter 5. We are looking at the story of a couple who gave an offering to the Lord. But you're going to notice real quick that something did not go right. I want to read it to you. It's found in Acts chapter 5. We're going to read verses 1 through 6 and make a little observation there. And then we'll see what God wants to speak to us today. It says, But a man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property. And with his wife's knowledge, he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not also at your disposal? Why is it that you have contrived this deep into your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. When Ananias heard these words, he fell down and breathed his last, and great fear came upon all who heard it. The young men rose, wrapped him up, and carried him out and buried him. If you continue, the story continues with Sapphira now coming in as well, and she lies and she dies. Think about that for a moment. You lie, you die. Why is this such a big deal? Well, it's a big deal because it's actually a contrast between something that happens in chapter four. And so actually, I want to I want to go back into yesterday's chapter and just show you a quick thing, because it wasn't just them that brought Ananias and Sapphira bringing the offering, but it was also a man by the name of Barnabas. In chapter four, verse 36, it says, thus, Joseph, who is also called by the apostles Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field that belonged to him and he brought the money and laid it at the apostles feet. And then chapter five says, but a man named Ananias with his wife, Sapphira. So actually what's happening here, it's a, it's a contrast between two offerings, two people bringing offerings before the Lord, one by the name of Barnabas, and then a couple by the name of Ananias and Sapphira. Why did God accept one, but reject another? They, they all did the same thing. They all sold a field. They all... Um, wanted to give to the church, and they both gave their money at the feet of the apostles. But why would God accept one and not the other? See, because what we know is that Ananias and Sapphira said that they were bringing all of the money to the apostles, but they weren't. They were keeping part of it to themselves. They were, they were dishonest. And in that moment, God struck them down. They were dishonest, whereas Barnabas was sincere and heartfelt and actually sacrificed. Ananias and Sapphira wanted it to look like sacrifice, but we're, we're really withholding something. You know, the truth is, is that God is looking for real, for sincerity, for honesty. He doesn't want us to be fake or to try to one up other people. I think Ananias and Sapphira saw what Barnabas did and said, oh, we could do that and wanted everybody on the outside to think that they were better than they actually were. And of course, as he said, you're, you're lying to the Holy Spirit. You're lying to God. You're not just lying to us. You're lying to God. And God takes that extremely seriously. And that's a big deal because I think we live in a generation right now. We live in a world right now that is looking for the real, for the real. Now you would think, okay, that as soon as these two people die, uh, that people would be like, oh, I'm out. <laughs> I'm leaving the church. I'm gone. I mean, can you just for a moment, imagine what it was like. The Bible says that there were young men that came and wrapped them and brought them away. Can you imagine what the conversation was like for these young men? <laughs> I'm sure some of them were maybe getting real honest for a moment there. But I think our world is looking for the real. God, of course, is looking for the real and the honest and the humble, but our world is looking for the real, the honest and the humble. This church did not lose members. Actually, if you go and you read the rest of it, it says, and a great fear 
came upon the whole church. I bet it did. And all who heard these things. And look what verse 14 says. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. So here's our application today. One, are we being honest before the Lord? Are we being honest in what we give and what we do? Are we doing it because we want people to see what we do? Are we doing it because we want to honor the Lord and bring sacrifices to him, to worship him with our giving, with our serving, with our loving? Are we just wanting it for show? Also, to realize that the world around you is looking for real, honest, humble people. So how can you this week be that to those around you? I believe that our churches will grow even more as we're honest and humble. So that's my encouragement today as we read Acts chapter five. Let me pray for us. Father, we love you. And God, we just, we thank you for your word. Thank you, God, that as we're diving into this incredible book of Acts, that we see that you are alive and active. We see how your church is being birthed. We also see though how you want your church to run. And God, I pray that you would help us to be men and women that don't just do things for show, don't do things just to be seen, but that everything that we do for you would come from a heart of sincerity, a heart of honesty, a heart of openness. God, we repent of anything that we are doing right now that is not honest to you. And God, we pray that you would reveal that to us. God, may we walk in humility and honor in all that we do and all that we say. God, I pray that you would bless your people today in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I love you. Hope you have an incredible day. We'll see you tomorrow for Acts chapter six.